Good evening. This is the king of all mediums. And I'd like to welcome you to podcast number 15. And uh, tonight, I'll be talking a little about uh, Li- Alyssa Milano and also uh, my fray into super low carb, a few uh, a finds, and um, the, the, uh, if you'd like to enter the contest, I'm going to be giving you uh, a hint to help you win that contest. Uh, by the way, there will be uh, the contest is to win a C- compact disc, Woodstock 2, um, after they had um, after they had released an album called Woodstock, that famous couple, you know, hugging each other, released the second album of tracks. Now, this is a compact disc, and it is free. Okay, no strings attached. I'm not going to get your email address, <laughs> as uh, Jeff, as he's such an intelligent man. I'm not going to do that. It's my fault. I had set things up um, poorly. I did not, I could not figure out how to conduct it, but now I have. That was not my intention. So, uh, genius Jeff, he was so right. (laughs) No, no, he wasn't right. I am not a multi-level marketer. I don't care. I don't care. I'm just trying to get rid of the CD, but do a promotion, too. I want to get people to watch my podcast and enjoy it. I think I have something to say. And I think I'm interesting. I hope I'm interesting. Maybe I'm not interesting. So, but we'll see. You know, hopefully build my con- uh, podcast to 100 views, and then maybe a thousand, and maybe ten thousand, maybe a hundred thousand. But gotta get started some way. So my first um, thing is um, is um, you know to get a little promotion going, and there will be more. I have another item that I uh, bought two of because I do that sometimes because and we'll talk maybe one of the podcasts we'll talk about my uh, ADD <laughs> attention deficit syndrome issue because uh, I do lo- lose things quite a bit misplace them I put them down and I can't find them again so so let me first uh, talk about Elisa Milano and she uh, tweeted out something uh, very interesting she said that um Shame to the Golden Golden Globe Awards. Shame on the Hollywood Foreign Press Agency, the HFPA, for not having one black member out of eighty-seven. You know, so here the here's this this washed-up actress who basically made a lot of money in her career. I'm sure she's getting residuals from Who's the Boss and Charmed and. Instead of going away quietly like she she could have and had lived a nice suburban life, she has to go on Twitter and 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 uh, go and talk about her woke causes. So now she goes and says, "Oh, how can I stay relevant?" And she looks at the at the eighty seven members. She says, "Wait a second, there's not one black person. I got to talk about it." Well, Alyssa Milano, did you know there's a hundred and sixty seven, hundred and sixty any give and take time because usually each NFL team carries uh, five cornerbacks five corner corner down around the cornerbacks and none of them are white in fact I don't think there's been a white cornerback since 2003 Kevin Carvation I think the name so 100 out of 100 we'll just start usually last year if they're on give and take there's 160 NFL cornerbacks, not one of them was white. Now, there's not many people, I don't think there's one, maybe some white supremacist organization that says, how come there are no white cornerbacks? There's racism against white people. I don't see you, Alyssa Milano, complaining about this. And the probably the reason, because white guys just aren't that good at being cornerbacks, you know, it's not, it's not that, you know, that, you know, if there's a good enough white guy, and they would have made him into a quarterback. Now, I'm not saying there's not one person, you know, good enough to be in the Hollywood press, foreign press agent, whatever the hell that is, but, you know, there probably is, but it just is what it is, you know, just maybe there's just not one person who, of color that's, you know, in that agency that, you know, and... You know, why is she always looking... Why why to the left, why are you always looking at people's color? Why is this so important? You know? 
the, the skin color being the color, you know, the most important thing. You wake up every day and say, hmm, let me see. Let's say today is March 1st. Um, hmm, let me see how many people are in the Hollywood Foreign Press Agency. Because this is very important. I have to complain about something. You know, this world world doesn't have enough problems. With starvation, disease, war. How many people of color in the Hollywood Foreign Press Agency? So, this is dope. Alyssa Milano. She's the first she was in the show. Who's the boss with that Guido Scott Bayo? No, that's Scott. But the, what's the other guy? I'm confused. They could, have, they could have exchanged parts. You know, one could have been on, uh, what's that show? Uh, Fonzie Show, Happy Days. Uh, so uh, Tony, what's his name? Tony Danza, you know, some Guido. So he could have been on that show. She could have been. On, you know, she was on that show and did quite well. She was a little cute girl, very cute girl. And then uh, she went on that show, Charmed, with uh, Rose McGowan. Another nut. <laughs> Another nut. Another celebrities. And just go away. Uh, you know, just go away. You got your money. You got residuals, probably. But especially the second deal. I'm sure they got some good lawyer or something. It was set for life. That show, Charm, was very successful, too. And Alyssa Milano had a few kids. You know, you could have gone away. Go away. We don't want to hear you. You're a has-been. That's it. So, that's all I really want to say about Melissa Milano. <laughs> Stupid idiot. So, that brings us to my uh, second point. So, my diet, I've not been very happy with so far now. Low carb diets have worked quite well for me in the past. I've went from two hundred and twenty five uh, pounds to one seventy six. I think about two thousand and twelve. So, um, I haven't been happy with my current thing. Um, so, diet and um, so I said to myself, you know. Let's go super low carb. You know, instead of like, I've been probably doing 60 to 70 carbs, you know, maybe around there, give or take. So I said, let's go more. So I've changed it a little bit. I've been going to the uh, supermarket and I've been just buying pure meat. You know, I've been buying uh, chicken breast and uh, turkey burgers and hamburgers and that's been it. You know, I have not my own, you know, I do have a salad and, um, this morning I had with my I just had, I had eggs, but with my eggs I did have these low carb wraps. I'm trying to avoid even wheat, you know, even if it's they say it's low carb. I'm trying to avoid that. I'm just trying to go. With, it's it's hard though. After a while, you start getting sick of that stuff. But uh, so I'm calling this my super low carb. Now, I did it yesterday for the first time. I weighed myself uh, yesterday, and it was a very disappointing, you know, uh, yesterday. Uh, 220.2 I woke up this morning the first day I did this and I weighed myself I was shocked and I weighed 218.2 a two pound loss now I don't know I mean maybe you know sometimes these things do happen on diets you know you wake up you gain a pound you know half a pound but you actually the diet is working so it could be just some kind of uh, oddity or, or something like that but um I don't know, you know, so maybe this is the way. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to try it for a week. Now, Atkins called this uh, induction. He says in the beginning, you got to go super low carb, about t- only 20 grams of carbohydrate. And then uh, after a little bit, I don't know what he said, maybe a month, two month, two weeks, you could literally release it a little, uh, 40 grams. A lot of the grams are coming from the salads and things like that, you know. So, I mean, so... So this is more of a Atkins, not, not a paleo diet. This is a severe, um, you know, right now I'm thinking maybe, it, well, I was going to have a lamb chop and a um, a salad, but right now I'm just going right to that, two, two burgers and some ketchup, and there's little carbs in the ketchup. So this is not really a true, but it's close. This is very, you know, this is, I mean, I think I've had two, the last two days, each day under 20 grams of carbohydrates, you know. With the chicken, I do have uh, ketchup. So there's a few carbs in there. And what's really incredible is my, um, bl- uh, my, I'm taking my blood, the, the blood test scores are, are insane. 
I mean, uh, I get scared. I'm supposed to take insulin at night. <laughs> We're talking about the blood sugar is like 79. You know, it's like there's no blood sugar because there's no sugar. <laughs> no sugar. Um, so you know, I've been very re- reticent to take my uh, uh, to take what I normally do take. So um, you know, I haven't been taking my insulin. I don't want to get it too low. You know, I don't want to get the blood too low because. Um, so we'll see, you know, how this trend continues. Um, I will uh, discuss that in uh, my podcast. So, but I'm interested to see if the super low carb works. And you know, maybe I just need a kickstart. Um, you know, I don't think I'm going to have to do this forever. I just want to kickstart, you know, get myself, you know, get, get down to 210 maybe, you know, maybe that's the way. And then, uh, you know, maybe a little supplement with a little like, see, like to me, exercise is, does, it can help, but it's, you know, again, it has its drawbacks when it comes to weight loss. Now, exercise is always good for many things, but uh, according to Gary Taub says, exercise is good for weight maintenance. Uh, that means, and weightlifting, I found, actually puts weight on you, you know, so, uh, because you're hungry, especially weightlifting will make you hungry. Exercise too can make you hungry, but it's good though because uh, it makes aerobic exercise has releases endorphin. That means heroin like <laughs> substances in your body, uh, but not as good as the real thing. <laughs> was he Artie Lang? It says uh, running has never been as good as uh, <laughs> heroin. <laughs> okay, so let's go to our finds. We'll save that for last. Okay, so a track tape. Now he said this is in good condition. Oh yeah, it was actually. Um, the cover wasn't good, and this is. Did I show you guys this? Already? No, no, I did not. Okay, this is um, Green River by Creedence Clearwater Revival. I'm showing people the same things. So I keep worrying, and uh, I believe this is the second album. I want to get all their works because they're known as a singles band, you know. Um, their albums supposedly weren't great, but I did find a great song. I'm, I'm planning on having a Thursday night as my miscellaneous night because I don't have it. I don't have that many real. To, it's supposed to be my real to real night when I when I created this uh, when I created Hip Days Lounge and I put up uh, all these analog, uh, you know, and digital. Uh, you know, mediums, I said, you know, I'm going to have a reel-to-reel night, but I found the price is very prohibitive. So I said, what am I going to do? Well, one night, uh, once the first Thursday of every month, my new plan is to have a reel-to-reel night. And then one night, I have to, what's called my deep cuts. I'll discuss that um, on a Thursday, what that is. I don't know what the hell it is, you know. <laughs> no, I know. Kind of have an idea, you know. Basically, a deep cut is a song that is not no one really plays, and there's actually a good deep cut on it. It's called "They Wrote a Song for Everyone." Now, this is interesting. Uh, let me see, go through the tracks. Track uh, program one: Green River Commotion. So, two great songs right there. Two: Bad Moon Rising and Lodi, okay, because those are great songs. The night time is the right time. Not a bad song. Tombstone Chat, okay, then not great. Wrote a song for everyone. That's a deep cut, great song. Uh, track four is interesting because it has sinister purpose, but then the track is filled up with Green River and Bad Moon Rising again. I get a problem with eight track tapes, is that, and I'm getting, I'm accumulating a lot of these guys too. I'm, the, I'm gonna be called Mr. Eight Track Tape. You know, <laughs> you know, like to me, to me, my preferred format is becoming. Uh, Compact this the sound is just so much better, you know, and you don't have to worry about these pops and these skips. Fine would be great if you didn't have the pops and the skips. That would be the best to me because you get the package, you get the the information, the feelings, but the oh these pops, you know, you gotta wash them. Um, let me do a little wash test later. I have um, one that was pretty bad. So some guy was showing uh, me. I gotta watch. He did it. How do you wash it with a little uh, detergent? And um, you know, you rub it and you let it dry, and uh, take an old t shirt, and that looked nice, but I, I don't want to see how it works, so I <laughs> might take a look at that. So, very good deal. Uh, Green River on a track tape that's our first 
item of the night. By the way, I got a lot of things to show. <laughs> so, okay, second item. Okay. Okay. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water, Real to Real. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This just came today. Oh, it's wrapped nice, nicely and the tissue. Has the lyrics on the inside. Here's the actual tape. I'm going to put it back for safety purposes. <laughs> and uh, inside, the lyrics to the box. Okay, I have a reel to reel on Thursday, but it will not be this. Uh, it will not be this reel to reel. But, so this came probably the most important reel to reel. Uh, at this time, I think, wow, it's amazing. <laughs> but these guys are only 29 years old. I'll tell you, <laughs> right now they're approaching death. I mean, it's, it's just incredible. So let's see what's on this, okay? Courts Bridge Over Troubled Water, great song. El Condor Passai, you know, he had, you know, Paul Simon's always been good at adapting other culture songs. This time he went to Peru and kind of, Cecilia. You're breaking my heart. The other two tracks I'm not familiar with, so I'll give them a listen. Keep the customer satisfied. So long, Frank Lloyd Wright. If you're one of the younger people, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright was a great architect. Okay, side two. Uh, the Boxer, of course. Great, great song. Lie, lie, lie. Lie, lie, lie. Which uh, Jeff accused me of yesterday. <laughs> That's one thing, people. I am no liar. I'm a good man. Good man. Uh, but a lot of you women like to go with lie, lie, lie. <laughs> then you complain. <laughs> oh, no. What you don't like about men, no. Baby Driver, never heard of it. The only living boy in New York. Why don't you write me? Bye Bye Love, of course, is a cover of the Everly Brothers. Bye Bye Love. Bye bye happiness. Song for the asking. So I haven't heard um haven't heard a few of these, but so it should be interesting. Produced by Paul Simon, Arthur Carfunkel, and Roy Holly. This would be the last that the duo would do until their live album, which I do have, one of my finds when I was um was saved from my um thing. So in other words, also they have the um featured musicians uh, got guitar Paul Simon, Fred Carter Jr., not familiar with him. A lot of Wrecking Crew guys. Hal Blaine, Joe uh, on drums, Joe Osborne on bass, the great Larry in late now, Larry Nectel, and strings, Jimmy Haskell and Ernie Freedom, Freed, Freeman. Um, so, here's the back for you people. So, interesting. So you might ask what Reel to Reel is going up. You'll find out. It actually was released in 19... So by the way, most of the Reel to Reels you're going to get are going to be old. Now, I love this woman, not her politics. <laughs> I think her politics, I mean, she don't believe this stuff because I'll tell you why. Because she's lived a high life, you know. <laughs> you know, all her life, you know. And this is my poster of Cher and... I love Cher. She's so beautiful. Isn't she? Such a beautiful woman. I mean, 74, she's going to be 75 this year. But when I was a kid, there was no more beautiful woman than Cher. Every girl I had a crush on had that long black hair. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. She's beautiful. So she wasn't bad, too, in the music. You know, he wrote some good songs for a great singer. And, um, you know, and... Uh, I thought this was going to be a huge poster, but it turned out to be a little bigger than a legal size paper, you know. <laughs> so, and, you know, I see her on Twitter all the time, and um, love share, love share. So beautiful. Wow. If I had only been her boyfriend. You know, my last boyfriend of note was um, comedy writer, quote, unquote, <laughs> put a quote before the comedy, put a quote after the comedy, Ron Zimmerman, who, you know, I pissed off a couple of times on uh, we're trying to compete for share so you know and I had to piss him off you know I'm competing for share you know and, someone, and he got it 
got to get after the competition. You know, I want share. You know, I got to get share. You know, I love share. I want share. Um, so, what a, it's such a beautiful woman. I mean, she's can't tell. Look at her. She's a, how can you, how can you not like that? You know what I mean? <laughs> she's, but uh, a, little, a little shallow, you know. I mean, but her politics are insane. I mean, you know, tweets, she was defending Jesse Smollett. And I had to call her out on that chair. <laughs> you know, all these tweets, what happened? Uh, white racists, you know, you know. But it's all virtue signaling. She wants to look good. These left wing Hollywood, like uh, Lisa Milano and uh, Cher, they want to look. They want to be relevant, and I get it. You, know, you don't look good on the right. You don't look good good if you're uh, James Wood or John Voight. It's not many, you know, I can't think of one female that comes out on the right position that's famous, like a celebrity, uh, you know, just, you know, you know, I mean, I can't think, really think of one, so, but Cher, I love her, she's so beautiful, <laughs> is that wrong to love someone for that, I don't know, I guess, that's the old saying, a man starts to love a woman for what she looks like and then likes a woman for her beauty and then learns to love them and it's the opposite of a woman they they you know women are not that pretty good men you know maybe john stamos <laughs> you know then eventually the woman will find a man attractive for his look so you could find me attractive women you're lucky <laughs> okay uh, let's see what else we got two more things so you know as a um as a person who's a, in recovery, um, I don't drink and I don't use drugs, but I believe in getting high. There's nothing wrong with getting high. The problem is the substances we use to get high are problematic. So, you know, I, I've read a couple of books on that. So I, I wanted to read another one. They're always kind of interesting. So the one I have now is uh, Get High Now, written by James Nestor. And there's a few of these out. And uh, so I, have, I I got another one. And so, you know, they pretty much are kind of similar. Um, and they offer uh, uh, similar to the techniques. Now, most of them with uh, meditation. Uh, I think there's some chanting. Um, so, you know, I'd like to read a couple of them. Because getting high is nice. Getting high. You know? So the whole idea is altered consciousness. Okay? Uh, altered consciousness. So you say, what is your regular consciousness? And it's um, going around, you know, every day. And, you know, same thing. You get up in the morning. And then you go to work. And then you come home. Boss might yell at you. you some of you have kids. I don't because I'm not dumb. You know, so. And then you, you go home and... Um, you um you know and that's it but wouldn't it be nice if we just get ourselves out of that and you know alter our consciousness you know that's what marijuana does that's what uh, cocaine does and that's what alcohol does and that's what heroin they all you know they give us s different types of highs you know like uh, alcohol gives us a a buzz you know it makes us feel good pleasure centers and um you know so so this book promises to get us high, but to do it without any drugs. So it's a very interesting idea. Can it deliver on? And it's, I, apparently it can, maybe, you know. The problem is, of course, the easy, easiest and fastest ways to get high are with substances. Okay, and I said for myself, I would pro the only probably two substances I would ever use, again, are opiates, and um, marijuana, but marijuana in the form of um, gummies. Yeah, I wouldn't smoke it. But um, so the opiates to me are, you know, not that they're very safe. They could actually be very dangerous, of course. You know, a lot of people have been, you know, have gotten addicted and died. There's an opiate crisis in the country, but they give you such a great high, and as long as you have a very limited supply of them. Um, and you don't take too much of your dose, it's pretty safe. It's not a, a very dangerous drug in terms of, um, you know, 
it's not gonna, you know, be like methamphetamine and cocaine to me are very dangerous drugs, um, and marijuana too. Um, alcohol has the danger of addiction because the buzz, you know, also, the key to alcohol to me, if you're using it as a way to solve, get out of your problems, then that's what you're gonna have, like I used to do, you're gonna have a big issue, problem. If you just use it as social stimulant, go out, you know, be less nervous and when you go out and meet people, have a few drinks and not go overboard, maybe three drinks tops, then it could be very helpful. You know, it's, 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 it's the way you use your drugs. Now, before I go to the last one and a half, <laughs> let me uh, tell you the answer to the, um, the uh, contest. My favorite color is magenta, whatever the hell that is. So I don't even know what magenta is. So, okay, so now, so I, I use my Polaroid camera. Now I actually didn't take this picture with my Polaroid. I actually took my iPhone, I took this picture with my iPhone and then I transferred it to my Polaroid and my Polaroid printed it out. Isn't that neat? So this is a picture of Big Hits Volume 2 through the past darkly, interestingly enough, isn't it interesting? And the last show and tell of the week is an album, which I haven't got many of. I love albums, though. The problem is, in fact, that this is the one I'm going to claim. Uh, it has a few skips, uh, um, uh, especially on the uh, first, the begin. It seems like the first tracks are usually the best tracks for some reason. Um, now. This is the Three Dog Night, and the Three Dog Night greatest, what is it called? <laughs> Joy to the World, All the Boys and Girls, the Three Dog Night, their greatest hits. Now, let's see, this is side two. We'll have to do side two first. Never been to, now by the way, the Three Dog Night, if you don't know about them, they were basically three singers, and um, basically... Backup band, right? And they were very, very successful. One of the problems is they never got. Then they're probably not going to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They're very sixty-nine to seventy-one. They had, they were all over the charts. I mean, top positions many times, and they're probably not going to get to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because they did not write their hits basically. Um, so they had three lead singer: Corey Wells, Danny, uh, Danny Hunton, and Chuck Negron. I think. Uh, Danny Hunton has bitten the dust. And um, Corey Wills had a bad coke problem. Not Corey Wills. <laughs> Chuck Negron had a bad coke problem. And he isn't. He was uh, kicked out of the band in the mid-70s. Um, so what they were is a repository. Since they were very, you know, they had great voices and great, great ba band too, the backing band. Um, a lot of songwriters' uh, songs were reinterpreted by them. So... Let's go inside. Well, let me put side one. Hold on. <laughs> so the greatest hits, Joy to the World. Okay, let me see. Let's try cleaning this too. <laughs> All right, so let's go Let's go to side um, uh, one first. Okay, so the first song is a Joy to the World. All the Boys and Girls. Right? That was written by the great Hoyt Axton. And by the way, a little trivia question. His mother, Mae Axton, co-wrote 